you are going to a really great event, they often want a really killer amazing speech. It's okay if you still sometimes do a late night. That's a normal for a lot of people who are really grafted and creating something unique. The question a lot of people wonder is why do people get paid to speak on stages? You know, there's 10 million ways to say the same thing. Hello and welcome back to the vlog. In this vlog I thought I'd go through and show you the process of a keynote in terms of speaking. So um, part of my role and business and job is that I will stand on stages virtually and in person um, and keynote and speak on whatever topic that has been agreed between the two people. So I thought I'd just take you along because I don't think people understand what goes into it and I don't think people understand what the whole situation is with it. So it varies on event to event, but um, today my diary is mapped out just for my keynote and it's the one coming up in a month's time and um, it's really exciting. So I am about to start this morning and then I've got a meeting at 5pm with the organiser of the event to then run through what I've gone through. There's certain things I like to do um, when we're preparing in the sense of I don't like to do the whole thing too early so it's exactly a month today and that's a great time skill for me. I don't, if I do it too far out it just feels irrelevant by the time I get there um, and so I like to prepare it quite soon before. Um, what does happen though is prior to this day happening there is a planning session that takes place before that we'll lay layers with whoever is booking me for the speaking and fully work out what they want. We then do research into the event, the place we're going to, um, the audience type, like a whole demographic, essentially like a strategy before creating the keynote. Um, obviously the content in the keynote is often can be similar, it's not always, but it's about how you say it. And you know, there's 10 million ways to say the same thing. And that is where I believe I get such a great response from my keynotes, just because of the time it goes into, you know, making that happen. Then I have a notes um, thing on my phone, which for each thing I'm booked for, so for any speaking things, anything where I'm gonna be writing a keynote, a presentation, a speech, I have a notes app. And then I write just whenever it comes to me, all the things I wanna say, all the things that I think would be important to be in it. So that when the day like today comes, when I'm actually gonna create it and fully get it in there, it then is easy for me to do. Because the reality of it is, is I know most of the content, like I can talk about it in my sleep, but it's about the format, it's about how, etc., etc., of how we're gonna deliver it. So I found the, the one for today. And um, I mean, it's like, it's so long. And that's just of like random things that I've said, like, oh, I wanna do this, or this would be cool, that'd be cool. Aside from that, I also have a written thing that we go through that I've been using. Um, and then today I'll spend a good chunk of time actually putting it all together, making sure it makes sense, then have a meeting and discuss whether this is in the right direction. Do we wanna change it? Is it not what they want? Do they want more of something? Do we take it out? Then obviously there's a whole process after that of practicing and checking timings and working through that whole rigmarole, which is really exciting. Um, and I just, I thought I'd share this because I just don't think this is something people um, realise. I think people just think you go on stage and that's that. And, you know, for some people it might, but I think for most or nearly all really great speakers, there is a process and I think you go through if you're delivering, if I'm delivering a guest workshop, we have, I can have um, presentations on topics and that can be a lot quicker. But if somebody is, I think the question a lot of people wonder is why do people get paid to speak on stages? And aside from the obvious of their time, what I don't think people realise is if you are going to a really great event, they often want a really killer amazing speech, as they should, and a really great keynote. And so for me, I choose to do it of you know, it takes a hell of a lot of my time. Um, and that is why people like me get paid to speak at events and and why often it isn't cheap. Um, because there's a lot of things that, that go into it. Um, so yes, that is today, that's what's going on. The keynote I'm writing today is titled How to Stop the Ick and Make More Sales in 2023. 
um, so it's obviously about sales, <laughs> which I love to talk about. So I'm very excited about this one and hopefully we can get it into the time that is required. That is the biggest problem I have is making sure everything I need to say and want to say fits into the time frame. My keynotes and how I kind of work them is not necessarily the same as a lot of people in the sense of it's not just like this long inspirational like um like monologue it is only me talking but it's much more of a workshop style even if it's a big room full of people who are all kind of staring at me I like to get people doing stuff I like people to feel like they go away with stuff they go with to do's they go away with ideas and so in order for that to happen there's an immense amount of structure and preparation needed to get that really right um so yes I will speak to you soon so I'll show you this. So this is a keynote. Um, as you can see, sales coming on greenhouse and everything too. You can see last edit was on the August the 10th. This is a two-page document which had already been planned in, written on. So that's just something for us to go off. I can't show you everything, but this is there was like there's two pages of this, but this is some of it. So there's like minute by minute breakdown of what it's gonna be and what we need to change um, in terms of how much I can get in in the time. Um, so what I do is I build it out, it'll be too long and then we'll cut it down. So I'm now at the point where I'm gonna use the whiteboard and these amazing things. These are giant post-it notes. If you've not seen these before, you need to get to know these are insane they're absolutely huge um these ones are a bit squashed because i often travel with these if i'm going to meet a client um so they're a bit squashed but they'll be fine um and this is where we're going to start mapping out the journey that people go on through the keynote because the journey that they go on through the keynote will dictate how much they take away with them and how much they kind of move with what we're saying, so or what I'm saying. So that is the next part of this process. So I've now mapped this out, um, I know my handwriting I'm severely dyslexic so you won't be able to read it probably. So this is basically all of the notes that we had and we've like consolidated them down and I've worked out, I've moved some stuff, worked out timings, so we've even put like the minutes on um, some key objectives for each point of the talk. Um, and this is kind of how we build it out, so we have this written. But I've moved some of them so the order makes more sense. I've changed the timings on some of them um, and tried to keep it to our, you know, 49 minutes. Ideally, I think it's supposed to be 45, but I will check today. Um, and then we've got a Q&A. But I know my session is just before lunch, so that will give me a slight bit of wiggle room, I have been told. <laughs> but we will try and keep it to the right thing. And so this will then plan how we continue on. It is currently 10 past um, 11 on the same day that we started this experience together. Um, I'm talking quietly because people are in bed. So I had a meeting with the event organiser which was really cool and really great and we went through um, slides and layout and things that I was talking to you about previously. All was good. We refined some things where I had queries about things and they were able to give me a full straight answer of, of what they want and what they need. So it was very exciting and both had a moment where it was just like, oh, this is going to be so good and so useful and so helpful for the people coming to the event, to the keynote. So that was really exciting. Um, so yeah, went through that. It was a great meeting. And then I finished work, went out for dinner, saw a family friend. Then in the middle of that, there was a bit of a quite a significant family emergency so that's really disrupted the evening um obviously like you know that sounds really like bad like as in um just really sad for them 
Um, now I've come home. It's now went to the pub, and then it's now ten past eleven. So I am gonna actually start doing a little bit of work. This is not something I normally do, but at the moment we have so much going on. Like hundred miles an hour. It's not client stuff. It's like everything else is going on in the business, and so um. I'm gonna start this doing something now because tomorrow I go away for the weekend and we're going away with my family to somewhere that we really love to go to and it's really close to our hearts and we're also gonna take my mum's ashes I think and do that which is a whole thing in itself obviously um so yeah there's just a lot going on a lot of um things happening etc um so that is me and yeah I'm gonna, gonna crack on with a bit of work but I just wanted to come on and say if you've been building your business and work on your business for years and years it's okay if you still sometimes do a late night that's a normal for a lot of people who are really grafting and creating something unique and innovative and if you are someone who's really forward thinking like it's it's quite normal so yeah bye